name is Rakesh Sudhi. I uh, grew up in India and I've been in the United States since 1984. Uh, I merely went there because I pursued uh, the desire to become a transplant surgeon. It became very clear that I had to have a basic understanding of immunology. And I spent a few years in the immunology lab and learned a fair bit, so that's how I got involved in research and cellular immunology, and, and that's how I landed up publishing a fair number of papers in this area. Uh, I'm a practicing transplant surgeon. I put in livers and intestines in children, and I also in a very active lab, which looks not just at cellular immunology, but also the genomics and the genetics of congenital diseases, which come from transplantation, and, uh, um, and of course, all the immune outcomes. I think first we have to talk about systemic gaps, that we give a bunch of drugs lifelong to our patients and don't really know what they do. Most of the mind share in the last decade and a half have been occupied by genomics. But when you really look at it, it's, it's fairly, um, I would say, pedestrian. It does a little bit better than the CBC. But when we look at high resolution cell analysis, especially cell function analysis, we land up hitting predictive accuracies of well over but on the other hand, with high quality products and things that we've been using. And most of those uh, are not because BD came to my office and said something. It's because by just the process of looking and assessing what was out there, we found there was only one company that addressed those needs. And so I use instruments as well as reagents from BD and have since the year 2000. Okay. It's something that we can do with these four cytometers. It's as I said, the predictive accuracy is better. But if there were limitations, I think it's in the instrumentation, uh, which uh, currently is more suited to reference laboratories but with a little bit more staffing. To make it approach the level of access of, say, genomics, etc., we have to simplify instrumentation. Uh, I think the reagents don't need any more simplification. They're very, very good. I think if we can simplify the instrumentation, put it in the hands of more and more people at the bedside, I think we will see diagnostic accuracies improve to 80 percent, which they have not so far. Okay. And uh, would you like to talk about the role that BD is playing in uh, India to offer immunodiagnostics for the growing number of cancer patients specific to India? Um, I don't know that I can speak to the Indian market, okay. but I think if we go back to the history of looking at antibodies, mm -hmm. which are, say, labeled in the way that they can be detected, and which in turn can be used to detect uh, any number of markets. Uh, one of the few words that comes, a few companies that comes to mind is BD because of just its uh, long association in cell analysis, uh, because of the fact that most of us, uh, whether as clinicians or, or as um, researchers, find ourselves increasingly, or not, well, at some point or the other, we've interacted with BD or its products. And those of us who are developing clinical products that require a very high level of mind, and the machines are FDA approved, there's only one company that stands out consistently. Others make one of this, uh, one of that, uh, and they do a good job too. But I think uh, you know, to, to go to a one, one stop uh, sort of house, I think we need to test it. And anything you want to say to reiterate the need for, uh, for innovation? Well, Probably as a, as a bedside clinician, the need for any innovation comes not from us, not from you, not from anyone in this room, it comes from patients. Because in the end, it's patient suffering that drives innovation. And the ones that are the liaisons between patient suffering and, say, vendors of technology like BDS, people like us, and, and so that's the best we can do. So I think the patient calls for innovation all the time. And any advice for researchers working to develop new tools, new diagnostic tools? Uh, I, same thing again. You've got to pay attention to patient suffering. Um, two, you've got to let the disease pick the biomarkers. Okay. But in the end, the biomarkers that make it to the bedside are selected by the technology. So if you go down the step of development, like a top-down development, I think we're going to be better off than the tools that are Anything you else you would like to add which we haven't? Well, I think, I think this is it. Sure.